talked in the past about sampling forages before feeding them. This week, UNL Extension Forage Specialist Bruce Anderson is with us to look at what you might see when you get those sample results back. Well, we're going to have quite a few numbers, usually in, in several columns there with it there, Jeff. And, and typically, a, a lot of different types of characteristics will be described in a typical forage test, all the way from the moisture content through protein, fiber, energy, minerals, uh, uh, and could be a number of other things, depending on what a producer may uh, particularly request. But uh, uh, typically, uh, we'll have something that's going to look a little bit like uh, what we have listed here in this example, where uh, we have a couple columns of, of numbers uh, and each uh, of the numbers kind of identified here. And I think it's real important that people recognize that uh, uh, most of the time they really need to pay most attention to the DM or the dry matter figures there because when they're trying to put together rations for their livestock all of the requirements that they list for the animals is going to be based on the dry matter content of the feed. And so when we have something that has a moisture level as this sample here does mm -hmm. of 6% and the dry matter is 94%, you can see as you look down the column of numbers that all of the numbers uh, in the two columns differ from one another because they're adjusting for that moisture. Let's go through some of the other categories in our mock example here. If you're looking at the protein category, explain to me what you're looking at in those numbers. Well, typically, especially if we're looking at uh, beef cattle, we're looking at uh, protein numbers pretty closely on forages uh, because beef cows during the winter time period probably need to have a minimum of 7 to 8 percent protein in their diet, and that's in the dry matter portion here. And so with this example here, where it has 7.8% uh, protein in the dry matter, it looks like it's in pretty good shape and probably could meet uh, many of the animal's needs there. But as we look at some of the other numbers in here, there's one, one in here, the ADICP, which stands for Acid Detergent Insoluble Crude Protein. Now that's quite a mouthful and why they <laughs> abbreviate it. Some labs will list this at heat damage protein, other labs may call it acid detergent fiber protein, but it refers to protein that's uh, bound up in the uh, fiber and isn't going to be readily available to the animals. All uh, forages have some of that, and in the situation here we see that uh, a little less than 1% of the dry matter is in that form. When we find that over 10 to 15 percent of the protein is bound up like that, we need to then adjust the actual protein because we know that the animal is not going to get so much and so the lab will list an adjusted crude protein. That really is the line that I would focus on most cases because it's the number that we're going to use with uh, our diet uh, and ration formulation. And many times we'll see that they're the same, but if we have some tobacco brown type mm. of hay that got some heat damage, we may see a bigger number in that heat damage mm. co column and we might see uh, then an adjustment downward in terms of the crude protein that we ought to be using there. If you move into the fiber category, what do you want to look for there? Well, the fiber category is, is really important because it tends to give us uh, indications as to both how digestible the forage is going to be and how much of that forage the animals would be able to eat if they were given free choice. The acid detergent fiber, or ADF, uh, typically these are very common numbers for a, a grass hay that we see here. Uh, and that ADF value that's listed in there is used oftentimes for calculating the energy because this pretty much measures the part of the forage or the hay that is not going to be digested very well by the animals. It consists mostly of cellulose and lignin. And so the animals can't use it. And so if we use that in, in certain uh, calculations, we can determine how much they will be able to use. In contrast, this NDF or neutral detergent fiber adds all the fiber together there. And that tends to indicate kind of the bulkiness of the ration and that leads to kind of fill in the animal and kind of affects how much that animal is going to be able to consume. This becomes maybe more important for dairies, uh, but when the numbers start getting very high, it can influence uh, really how much the cows can eat if we're trying to uh, maintain beef cows during the winter as well. 
to going down further, you see the TDN, and you know we're in the energy category. Uh, what do you want to shoot for? Well, in in that situation here, these are are very nice numbers, uh, right in the kind of the uh, maintenance levels that we're looking for on on beef cows. Sometime, some some places in the low to mid 50s is typically what 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 we want for a, a dry beef cow during the winter time. Uh, all these numbers here, the TDN as well as the other energy numbers here of net energy of maintenance, net energy of gain, and net energy of lactation, they're all calculated values. They don't measure these directly. And in most lab situations, we're probably taking the calculation directly from that previously discussed ADF or acid detergent fiber. Then we get on to uh, other areas like the calcium, the phosphorus, and there may be other minerals mm -hmm. that people will use there. And, and of course, we've got various ratios, various quantities that we want to make sure that the animals are able to acquire either through the feed that they're consuming or a supplement that they might receive. And finally, the last number that you're going to look at, what does it mean? Okay, that's uh, the relative feed value that we see here at the bottom. And that sometimes provides some confusion for folks, particularly uh, uh, when we're looking at grass haze and looking at feeding uh, uh, some of our beef cows. Uh, the numbers of relative feed value oftentimes look a little low compared to what we might uh, see for a real good alfalfa or especially something that we're feeding to dairy cows. Uh, but typically it's not a real important value. Uh, it's used in dairy rations to kind of rank haze in terms of how uh, much potential energy intake they may get from that hay. Uh, in a beef ration, we can see some of that same kind of relationship, but for uh, our beef people, I very much think that there are three numbers that are most important on here. One is the, the moisture content of the hay. The second one is that adjusted crude protein uh, that they're feeding to the animal. And then the third one is the, is the TDN. If we get the moisture, the protein and the TDN right, uh, a little bit of supplementation of minerals and, and so forth will take care of our cows in very good shape and we can use these to determine how much of that supplementation we may need. Mm -hmm.